do the font explorations, uh, part two of project one, where you look through type libraries and find several different, actually 12 different typefaces that you think will help you have potential to help you ex, um, express your quotation. So maybe the connotative meaning or the mood of the type, maybe a type the face that you think really reflects the author of the quote or the time period or something like that. I'm just going to show you real quickly kind of the step-by-step uh, the -step approach to how you uh, put this together in Illustrator and how you can go get additional typefaces from your uh, Adobe uh, Creative Cloud app. So we're going to create a new file here. And I'm going to use the print uh, document type. And I'm going to keep it letter size. And I'm going to change this just to inches. So that I know that's an 8.5 by 11 um, file. And I want this horizontal. And according to your instructions, you want two horizontal pages. And pages are called artboards in Illustrator. So I want to put a second artboard in there. And then I'll leave the color mode and the um, uh, resolution the same for now and hit create. And there are two, uh, two artboards. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and we'll just work with one on this. And so I would go ahead and type my quotation in here using the type tool. I've already copied it. And so I'll just paste it in quote by Frederick Gowdy, who's a famous typographer or type designer. Someday I'll design a typeface without a K in it, and then let's see the bastards misspell my name. And make that a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's probably fine for 14 point. And so what I want you to do is you'll, you'll have your quote. You can kind of see how it looks in that typeface. And then the author. And then I want you to identify the typeface, uh, which in this case is Myriad Pro, that's called the family name, and then also the series, and in this case that's regular. Okay, so for Myriad Pro that I have loaded on my application, I've got all these different series that I could try. I'm just going to stick with regular for now. And then that's the first one. Now I just need to do 11 more in different typefaces that I think would uh, would be a good fit. Okay, so to do that, I can use my selection tool here, click on it, select the type, and you probably know I can, I can copy it. So do edit, copy, edit, paste, and drag it in pos into position and then make my change in my typeface or something like that. Let me delete that. Let me show you a quicker and easier way to duplicate items in Illustrator using my selection tool. If I just click on it, and now if I hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC, hold that down and then click and drag, it will duplicate it and it will also give me some guidelines to keep it aligned. That's four, five, six. And then I just do the same thing on the other page to get to 12. Now I can select one go to my type tool, select that type, and search through my type library and find another typeface that I might like. So maybe since this is a quote by Gaudi, I should use a typeface that Gaudi designed. And I'm going to go to Gaudi Old Style, which is one of his probably best known typefaces, a, a Roman um, face that he designed. And maybe we'll set that in regular italic. And I can see the difference in the set width. This is still the same 14 point, but it's, it's running smaller, isn't it? So I could probably even set that bigger if I want to. Um, I'm going to change then my family name in my series to Gaudi Old Style Italic. Okay, and then I do the same thing for the next one and choose something. Now, with your type on your own laptop or, or computer, you may not have a lot of typefaces available unless you've gone out and, and downloaded a lot of new typefaces. So I want to show you how to go activate new typefaces from your Adobe Creative Cloud account. 
uh, it, it's easy and it's free and, and there's a lot of good type there that's available to you. And so I always keep myself signed into my Adobe Creative Cloud account and that's where that you see that little cloud icon at the top of my menu bar and the red dot. If you don't have that on yours, and I'm not sure where it is on a PC, uh, you can find it through your applications folder. And it'll be right there, Adobe Creative Cloud, and you could get to it that way as well. But, you know, if you have this, uh, by default, uh, Adobe will ask to put it on there, and it's just kind of easy to keep, keep yourself signed in. So if I click on that, up comes the app window, and typically it's probably going to show you uh, this window first, your apps. And this is also what it'll look like when you activate your uh, applications for the first time or if you need to update them and things like that uh, you know this is where you would install your new applications what I want to do is find the type and that's over here under manage fonts and so I click on that and it's going to show me all of the typefaces or fonts that I already have activated I don't need to preview that uh, that I already have activated through Adobe. So that's my list of things I've already got. When you do this the first time, you're not going to have much in, in there. To get to additional fonts, what you want to do is go up here where it says Browse More Fonts, and it's going to take you out of the application window and into, um, into a new uh, browser window. And let's see. Second there, it had me signed out, but it just signed me back in automatically. Okay, so now I'm into the Adobe Fonts website. And what I like about this is that it's just easy to search. So I go into, I can, I can search for uh, by Sans Serif. Okay, and if I look here, click on Sans Serif, it will load all of those, and it's going to show me it's got, that's, that's 12 times 58 pages of sans serif typefaces that I can peruse through and look at, right? Uh, if I look at something a little bit more specific like a slab serif, I'm not going to get as many choices, but uh, these are the slab serifs where you see the little slabs and the kind of the, the blocks on the ends instead of, of normal curved serifs. But I've got still 10 pages of slab serifs that I can look through. Okay. If you want to look into decorative typefaces or uh, script and things like that, um, those are, are the kinds of options that you have. And so even within the decorative, you've got all these subcategories you can look for. So, you know, maybe I wanted something that's a little bit, um, I would say friendly, but I don't think Gaudi was that friendly. Uh, maybe I'd look at something that's a bit uh, typewriter-ish since he was a typographer. And so those are some choices that I would have there. Um, and let's say I want to activate those. So what I can do is I can take a little bit closer look at it. So let's go to uh, Libre Ruth, click on that, and it's telling me it has four fonts available. And th those four fonts are the different series. So I can look at the light, the regular, the medium, the bold, and I can activate them one at a time or I can activate all four at once. Okay, so now it's given me a message that they've been activated, and I can go back to my, um, go back to my Adobe Illustrator document, and now that typeface should be available to me. So let me uh, select the next one. Uh, select the type here, and search through my typefaces, and it was, Libe Ruth, I think, right? And there it is. And I can decide which one of those I like the best. Let's let's see the medium maybe here. And change that to Libe Ruth medium. And that one's done. And that's simply the process you'll go through. Obviously, you're going to put a lot more thought uh, into the typefaces that uh, that you want to explore. But technically, this is all there is to this part of the, of the assignment. You do that 12 times. And then you'll save your file. Let's put it on the desktop. So 
like um, needs font explorations. And I've got my Adobe file saved. And then what I'm going to want to do is save it as a PDF. And to do that, I do File, Save As. And under the format, I change that to Adobe PDF. And then I'm done. All right. And if I want to find that on my desktop where I saved it, I open up the PDF to check it. And I should see here's the one page. And then there's the second page, which, of course, I didn't finish. And that's all there is to it.